designing a Luton homework system is so important, as it will allow us to define how big the system will be, what Luton equipment will be needed exactly, and how much it will cost precisely. It is also during the design phase that will confirm where the Luton equipment will be installed and how everything will be wired together for the electrical contractor to complete the installation successfully. The great thing about Luton Homeworks is that all of these kind of work together. Programming can also be implemented automatically as you design your project and this considerably reduce the cost of commissioning, which is great. Anyway, in this tutorial, I'll share with you how I put together my system design package on all my Luton Homeworks projects. So without further ado, let's do it. Any project should start with a lighting floor plan, where you can see clearly the name of the rooms as well as the position of each lighting circuit together with their circuit reference. That reference doesn't mean anything and can be different from one project to the other. It is simply an ID that is given to each lighting circuit so the electricians can identify their cables. It is very important for me to use that same reference in my homework design documents to ensure we all speak the same language. And in case where there is no circuit IDs, I'll assign my own ones. The legend on the drawing should also confirm which circuit is not dimmable, like we can see here, and which ones are mains or 0 to 10 volt dimmable. To me, this is probably the most important information we should have on that drawing. Alternatively, you can also start from a load schedule. We should provide you with the same information as the lighting floor plan, but on a list format. In general, load schedules are issued by lighting designers, and this is actually one of my favorite ways to get the lighting circuit information. And if you want to know more about lighting floor plans and load schedules, you can check out some of my early tutorials that cover these subjects in detail, and you will find the links in the comment section below. The design phase for a Luton Homeworks project is a process that normally takes a few days of work. It may also involve site meetings and correspondence with clients, lighting designers, and electricians. And the design documents may need to be updated a few times to adapt with changes that may take place during those projects. The design process I use integrates all these parameters in order to deliver the information to my clients effectively. Anyway, now that I have all the documents needed, the next step will be to add all the lighting information into my Luton Homeworks database using the Luton Designer software. So here, I launched the Luton Designer software. Once I provided the basic information required to start my project, the software opens fully and I'm going to start my work from the design tab here. The first thing I'll do using my lighting floor plan or my lighting schedule is to create all the rooms in my project. So I'll start with the entrance hall, then the media room, the lounge, etc, etc. Here, I just need to make sure I use exactly the same name as the one shown on the floor plan or the light schedule. Okay. Next, from the design tab, I select loads from the drop down list here, and I'm now going to add all the lighting circuits in each room. So let's take the entrance hall here, for example. Using the lighting floor plan, I have a first circuit of dawn lights here with the reference B1. And the legend confirms those dawn lights are mains dimmable. So in my database, I'll add the circuit called dawn lights, and very important, I'll also add the circuit reference B1 in that column here called load reference. In that column called load type here, I'll tell the system what sort of dimming signal this circuit requires. So here, I have access to the incandescent halogen load type, then I can change to LED forward or reverse phase to match this load type. But the great thing with the Lutron mains dimming modules is that they can auto-detect the type of mains dimming signal a load requires. So, at the beginning of the design phase, I'll set all the mains dimming loads to auto-detect here to take advantage of this feature. 
In the entrance hall, I have a second lighting circuit with the reference B2. These times, the legend say that these artwork light fittings are 0 to 10 volt dimmable. So, back in the database, I'll add the circuit, artwork, lighting, with the circuit reference B2, and this time, I'll select the LED 0 to 10 volt load type. Next, I'll move on to the media room here, and also add all the lighting circuits in that room with their reference and load type. Very good. And as you guessed it, I will do the same thing for all the other rooms in that project. <laughs> to me, zone name, lot number and lot type are the most important information I'll add at the design phase. But you can add far more information if you want to by displaying the relevant column from that link here. It is also from this page that you will add information with regards of contact closure outputs, motors for non-neutron blinds, gates or shutters, and also relays if you need some to operate a pump, for example. OK, so now that I have entered all the circuits I need to control, I'll move on to equipment from that same design drop-down list here. The equipment page is used to specify all the backroom equipment, like the Lutron panels that host the Lutron power modules, the Lutron processors, the Lutron interfaces, and so on. In fact, all the equipment that will be installed in the technical room if you want. So my next step here will be to assign all my lighting circuits to the relevant power modules to define how many of those modules and neutron panels this project will require. To start with, I've always found easier to add a new room called Lutron Panels, for example. And in that room, I'll start by adding a first Lutron enclosure with eight 10 amber CBO breakers that will allow for up to eight modules. And I'll name it Lutron Panel 1. I will now add a Lutron module in that first position here. And when I click on it, the software shows which kind of module can be fitted in that position. And in my case here, I'll choose the new Lutron 4A5 Pro LED Plus Phase Adaptive Power Module. This new Phase Adaptive Module has been specially made to control LEDs, offering various types of voltage compensation technologies to ensure a stable illumination on LED light fittings, which is great. And like most Lutron General Power Modules, it can control up to four lighting circuits. So, I selected here to add it to my panel as my module number one. Once it's in, it will show you the four outputs of the module here. So, in module one, output one here, I'll click on the assign button here, and a new window will open that will list all the circuits available for that specific output. So here, for example, I'll expand the entrance hall section to find all the circuits I've added earlier and I'll assign the entrance hall don't light circuit by clicking on the assign button here. Once assigned, it will keep showing circuit's load type and reference here, which we will find very useful as we progress with our system design. And I'll carry on clicking on the assign button to assign the next circuit onto the next output and so on, adding new Lutron modules as I need them. Nothing really complicated here. The only thing I like to do myself is that sometimes I will spread the circuits of a specific room across two or more adjacent modules. Just so I don't have all my eggs in the same basket really. And if a module is turned off for any reason, I won't have the entire room in the dark. And whenever possible, I will also try to assign the larger mains dimming circuits to the output one on each of my Lutron phase adaptive module as it has a higher rating compared to the output 2, 3 and 4. And of course, the software only allows us to assign one single circuit for each module output. So if two or more circuits must work together, this will be done via the programming. Now that I have added all the mains dimming loads for what seems to be all the common areas in my project, let's now at the 0 to 10 volt circuits for those areas too in that same panel. 
I always like to have my panels to be split mindfully. If one can accommodate all the common areas, I'll try later to fit all the bedrooms in another panel, for example. So, same thing here to add a 0 to 10 volt module. Click on the plus sign here in position 5 and select my 0 to 10 volt module here. This is the LQSE 4T10, and like any other Lutron power module, it has four outputs. And in the same way, I'll assign my 0 to 10 volt lighting circuit. 0 to 10 volt wiring to the module is quite specific, so I'll invite you to check out the module installation instructions for more details. Or you can check out my tutorial on the principles of 0 to 10 volt dimming, and the link is on the comment section below. There we go. It seems like I've managed to fit all the lighting circuits for the common areas in the same panel. <laughs> Very good. So, to assign all the other circuits, I'll add another panel, which I named Lutron panel number 2. This time, I'll choose a panel that can accommodate up to 9 modules, as I can feel I'll need some extra modules. <laughs> So same thing here, I start adding my Lutron phase adaptive modules and assign my mains dimmable or auto detect lighting circuits. And then add the Lutron 0 to 10 volt dimming modules and assign my 0 to 10 volt dimming circuits. There we go. And I have managed to squeeze in all the bedroom lighting circuits in that second panel. <laughs> Great. But I still have all the external lighting circuits to assign. So I'll add the third panel smaller this time to assign those remaining mains dimmable lighting circuits. This panel will not be completely full, which is great, so I have space in case I need to add modules later when it comes to add the landscape lighting, for example. Or any other circuits that may show up in the later stage of the project, like bathroom fans, the mister, for example, then I will also be able to assign to some of the spare outputs in the other panels. Designing Lutron panels is all about optimizing the number of modules to a minimum on one hand while maintaining a cost-effective flexibility on the other. Now that I have all my circuits assigned to modules, the really cool thing about designing projects using the Lutron Designer software is that I can go to Report from the menu here, select Wiring Report here, and this wiring report will list where each and every circuit has to be wired on their respective module output, which is very useful. As we can see here, for example, on my panel 1, module 1, output 1, I have my downlight circuit in the entrance hall. It also shows the circuit reference in that column here, as well as the load type, which is great. DL1 here refers to the label on the connector on the Lutron panel that corresponds to this output. And same thing for all the other circuits that we've just assigned to all the other Lutron modules on all the other panels. So it's very clear for the electricians where those circuits need to be connected to. They just need to follow the instruction on this report. Very easy. The other important report I will also supply is the panel wiring report that we'll also find on the report menu here. The panel wiring report will provide a more graphic view of the wiring and how the lighting circuits have to be wired on the Lutron panel connectors. So again, we found our Lutron panel number one with our module number one clearly highlighted here. On the right hand side, we have a closer view of the connectors on that module number one. And we found our circuit of down lighters with its reference numbers in brackets here as well as where the live and neutral for these circuits have to be wired on the panel connectors, which is great. And same thing with all the other circuits on all the other modules. And when it comes to 0 to 10 volt circuits, this report gives all the details of where the mains cables have to be connected to, but also where the 0 to 10 volt cables have to be wired so they match the corresponding output. Fantastic. I will save those reports to PDF from that button here, and they will be part of my design package that I will supply to the electrical contractor. The electricians will only need to follow this information here to connect the circuits in the correct position on the Lutron panels. And at this point, it will be almost like painting by numbers, which is great. Now, going back to Lutron panel number one, 
I will now have to add the key piece of the homework system, which is the homeworks processor. So I'll click on that plus sign here at the bottom of my panel and look for the QSX homeworks processor. This Lutron homeworks processor has two links here for the communication with the rest of the Lutron equipment, like the Lutron power modules we've just added, or the Lutron keypads, or even the Lutron motorized blinds, if you have some on your project. It will also communicate with other Lutron processors or other control systems via those Ethernet ports here. You should also use those ports to connect the processor to your local network so you can control your system using the Lutron app. The processor requires a power supply that we'll also have to add in the same way by clicking on that plus sign here. This power supply will power the homeworks processor as well as all the keypads wired on the processor links. And at times, you may need to use more than one processor due to the project intricacies you're working on. But for this example here, one processor will be fine. And to complete this stage here, I now add my favorite Lutron piece of equipment, the wire landing boards. You have to have those wire landing boards on your installation. They are used to land all your Lutron cables coming back to your Lutron processor location in a very clean and effective way. Like the cables used to link all your keypads or your Lutron modules or your Lutron shades, for example. Those wire landing boards will allow us to move cables quickly and easily from one link of the processor to the other one when needed. But most importantly, it will allow us to quickly troubleshoot any wiring issue on our Lutron communication network, which will definitely reduce the cost of commissioning. I add two of them at my processor location and at least another one on each of the panels. Voila, we've added all our backroom equipment. Now, let's specify our Lutron keypads. With regards of Lutron keypads, I will start first with a new drawing using a clean floor plan. Or the lighting floor plan, if it's the only one I can get hold on to. And on that drawing, I'll start positioning keypads. Depending on the project I'm working on, keypad positions might have been already specified by the designers or the clients. Sometimes, if it is the only information I have, I'll adapt keypad positions to where traditional switches or on the floor plan, if any. Or alternatively, I'll suggest where the keypad should be if I were from a blank canvas. In general, keypads are needed at the main entrance or by any of the doors where you'll come in or leave the house, like the garage or any of the back or side entrance. To control the local lights, but also to activate an away scene when you leave the house or a welcome scene when you come back in. Then obviously, keypads are needed when you enter a room and also by the back garden windows or patio doors to control the lights either in or out. We also need keypads on the left hand and right hand side of the bed for ultimate convenience so you can control your entire Lutron system from the comfort of your bed. We need to remember that any keypad will be able to control anything connected to the homework system so the possibilities are virtually limitless. Now that I have all my keypad positions, I'm going to link them to one another in a loop between 7 to 12 keypads. The specification mentioned up to 15 PDUs per keypad runs of 300 meter maximum. So here we have a bit of a headroom. Also, at the beginning of a project, we may not always know the exact type of Lutron keypad the client will end up using. So I try to anticipate a bit with regards of the keypad's power consumption. Just to give you a quick example, all C-Touch keypads use one PDU. One colon palladium keypads also use one PDU. But two colon palladium keypads, although they count as one device, they will consume two PDUs. So let's say that in my case here, we are planning for palladium keypads. And even though I'm not sure which one will use one or two columns yet, at this stage of the design process, my wiring here won't exceed seven keypads per loop. 
So even if all keypads end up being dual column palladium, I will still be under the 15 PDUs per run kind of limit. I will now label my keypad loops for the electrician to identify cable runs accordingly. These loops need to start from the processor location, represented here by the star sign, and then go back to that very same processor location. Only one end of the loop will end up being connected to the Lutron processor. The other end of the loop is to be used only if the cable get cut during the building phase. So in case the cable get damaged, I can plug the other end in and quickly retrieve my keypads. Hence also the need of the wire landing boards we mentioned earlier. I'll also name all the keypads by giving each of them a unique ID number. And I have now completed my Lutron keypad layout drawing, which will also be part of my Lutron design package. Now, to complete this task properly, I will then go back to my Lutron database, still in the design tab under control, and I will add all my keypads, giving them a clear and short description, like for this one in the entrance hall, which I will call main entrance, for example. And I will report his ID here where it says box number, which in our case is A1. And I will add all the other keypads with their respective IDs for the entire project. Those IDs will obviously be of great help in the communication between everyone involved in that project, which is one of the key of a successful installation. Okay, so now I can say that at this point, I have all my Lutron equipment specified, right? I specify all my Lutron panels with their modules and processor, and I have all my keypads. Very good. My next step will be for me to go to the link assignment screen here to assign all my Lutron devices to my processor links in a way that everything communicates and be powered correctly. Most of the time, I'll have all my Lutron modules assigned, which means connected to the same processor link. And here, I'll assign them all to link number one. And then, I'll have all my keypad loops mindfully split between processor link one and two, so they are powered correctly, as we roughly have 30 PDUs available per link. And here, we're far from that limit, which is good. I found the result of this assignment phase to also be useful for the rest of the team. That's why, once I've completed this phase on the Lutron software, I will then create a new drawing called Lutron System Layout. First, I will represent all my Lutron panels. And as you remember, in this example here, we have three of them. I will specify which areas they are controlling. Here, we have panel number one for the common areas, panel number two for the bedrooms, and panel number three for the outside lights. I will also highlight the fact then for the wiring details, we must refer back to the wiring and panel wiring reports we generated earlier. And then I will show where the modules that belong to those two remote panels need to be connected on panel one for the contractor to run the required Lutron cables between the panels. And I will also show on which processor link my keypad loops are coming back to. Like here, I'll have keypad loop A and B on link number one and loop C and D on link number two of my processor to match exactly what I've just done in my homeworks database. This Lutron system layout is very good as it provides a quick overview of the entire Lutron homework system on a single page. The great thing about the Lutron designer software is that now that I've specified all my equipment, I can simply go to report again and then select this time bill of materials. Although we won't have any price information here, that report will list the exact quantities for all the Lutron equipment that I've used in my database. And I can just generate a PDF file and send what I like to call my shopping list to Lutron so I can come back to my clients with an accurate budget cost for their Lutron homework system. And I guess you see the advantage here. As the design phase progress and maybe Lutron equipment is added, modified or taken away, I can stay on top of things as all the information is linked. So it is easy for me to maintain design documents 
all at once and update clients on cost whenever needed. Okay, so the last stage that will also optimize costs for our clients, since I have all the equipment in my database, I can also start programming the keypad buttons so we can save lots of times when it comes to the commissioning phase. Let me take this keypad here, for example, and I will set the top button to full on. Set the button as a toggle button with the LED logic set to scene, which I found over the years to be the easiest settings for end user when they first start using their system. I will then use my area scenes as opposed to select individual circuits. Area scenes will automatically include all the circuits within a specific room. So, if during the design or even the commissioning phase, circuits are added or taken away, it won't affect my basic programming here, which is fantastic. So here, I will use area scene 1, which by default sets all the dimming circuits to 100%, as you can see here. By the way, if you want to know more about area scenes, feel free to check out my previous tutorials on that subject and you will find the links on the comment section below. Then, same thing here on the second button, then I will call low, also toggle, and LED set to scene. I will use area scene number 4 here, which by default set all dimming circuits to 25%, so we can quickly test that all my dimming circuits are dimming very well as planned on the first day of commissioning. And the last button, then I will call all off, still with LED logic set to scene, but this time I will set that button as single action, as you will only switch off the lights and therefore use area scene off. I will always pre-program keypads in that very basic way, along with basic engraving details. So, as I arrive on site on the first day of commissioning, I'll find all the Lutron equipment installed and wired as per my design documents generated from the Lutron database I've been working on since the very beginning of that project. And therefore, I can straight away download the database to my Lutron processor, address all my Lutron lighting modules and my Lutron keypads, and I'll have my homework system ready in no time for my client. And then I can spend the rest of the time adjusting, programming, setting lighting scenes, and fine tuning the system to my client's requirements so they can get the most out of their Lutron system, as opposed to start working on the system for the very first time on the first day of commissioning without knowing how the system has been designed and how the equipment has been wired together, whether or not it has been installed as per Lutron specifications, which can quickly become a nightmare and be very costly for the clients. Anyway, another great document I will also provide at this point of the design phase is the engraving report. So, from the report menu here, I select engraving. This document will be used ultimately at the end of the project to order the keypad engravings. I can generate a PDF which will show a keypad per page with the current basic engraving I've added earlier with the exact position and ID number for each keypad. This document will allow me to get the final client confirmation on the type of keypad to use and on the button engraving during the design phase. It will also allow the client to pinpoint and write down any modification they want me to do between programming visits. And finally, the engraving report can also be used as a reminder of how the buttons have been programmed until the final engravings are physically fitted on each keypad, which is very convenient. <laughs> voilà, there you have it. How to design a Lutron homework system. Obviously, this process is to be used as guideline as each Lutron project is unique. However, those steps should remain sensibly the same, like get the correct lighting documents and floor plans from the clients, 
provide wiring report so the electrician can wire each lighting circuit on the correct modular output, provide keypads wiring layout drawing so keypads are wired and powered correctly, provide the system layout drawing to give everyone involved on that project a clear overview of the system, provide an accurate bill of material and therefore an accurate cost for the Lutron equipment, provide the engraving report to get client approval and to provide guidance until delivery of the engraved buttons. And most importantly, to have a complete database ready for the first day of commissioning, which will save on programming costs. I hope you find this tutorial useful. And if you have any question, please let me know in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Adelux YouTube channel so you can be updated when the next video is released. Thank you very much. Good luck and talk to you again on the next tutorial.